Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. I am super excited to be here with you all today because today I am doing another live reading and I love doing these readings. I did one last, I actually just did one for a client and um, the more I do them, the more I love them because they really, really, um, these archetypal wheel of fortune, as I call it, it really helps you get clear about what path you should be on and, um, and also learn about the energies that are, that are behind the scenes of your world. And so um, there's a lot of intuitive information that's going to come from here. And so I always start, whenever I start working with someone, nine times out of ten, I, I do one of these uh, wheels for them. And, uh, and then we go into all the geeky marketing stuff and setting up the client attraction system and working on other mindset stuff. But it usually starts with this. And, um, and Kristen, you and I have been working together for a while, but you and I jumped straight into, into strategy, right? Yes. Um, but also because you, you are pretty up there. Like you, you just really have worked on yourself so much that, um, that a lot of this you intuitively know. Mm -hmm. And, and you've worked and transformed a lot, a lot of it. So today what I'm going to do I have today I have Kristen Mangione and she is uh, I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself and then Stella I'll let you introduce yourself. Sure. So let me see. Uh, go ahead. Uh, let me see because I can hear you very not the way I want it. Let me see. Just give me one second. Sure, no problem. I want right, to adjust Kristen. the value. Okay. Go ahead, Kristen. Uh, okay. So um, I'm Kristen Mangione. Uh, I am a dance alchemist. So I. Uh, I'm the founder and leader of something called Leela Dance Alchemy. And what that is, it is dance for life and soul transformation. And through their bodies, back with their intuition, their clarity, um, and their sense of center so that they can live more authentically and passionately. Awesome. And uh, today we are going to do your wheel and I have it here and I'm going to share my screen and uh, let's say, I think Stella logged out here for a bit. So this is uh, actually, this is yours, correct? Yes. Yep. That's you're correct. like, who is that? <laughs> that's like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I am going to, and I'll let Stella introduce herself when she gets back. Uh, let me see if she got back here or not. I don't want to miss her. Hmm, I don't know. Hmm. All right, we'll just get started with yours then. So let me give you guys a little bit of feed, uh, a feedback on what exactly an archetypal wheel of fortune is. So it's basically, um, you just saw it, but I'll just show it real quick. It's this circle and it's divided into 12 sections. And these sections are actually, um, each section represents a different aspect of your life or your psyche. And um, what happens is that when you create your wheel of fortune, you uh, you pick out your archetypes and there's a process that you have to go through in order to do that. And, um, and then you go through a process of matching which archetype goes in what house for you. Okay. And it's a very intuitive process. So it's, it's very, it's very much a, a process of divination. And um, when I first tried, I learned this process. This, this is one of my favorite tools from Carolyn Mace. And she's uh, one of my heroes. And I learned this. I've been studying it for, for a while. And um, I was like, let me see if this works. And let me tell you that the very first time that I got, that I did my, my first chart, or everybody has one chart and then you can create other charts. And I'll talk about that later. I was pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, I think I, I got the victim in the first house. And the first house is the house of identity and ego and the, ha the, the mask you wear to the world, right? 
And I was like, I am not the victim. Like if anything, I don't know of anybody else that talks more about, more against victimhood than I do, right? And um, so some of it was like, I really had to come to terms with my, my reality. And, um, and it was great. It was great because, you know, it made me face a lot of like my little, uh, my little shadows. And um, so I'm really curious to see how you're going to react to yours. <laughs> <laughs> so just so you know, everybody has four archetypes of survival. Okay. Um, the four archetypes of, of survival are the victim, the child, the saboteur, and the prostitute. And these archetypes of survival um, are the same for everyone. And besides that, there's eight other archetypes. And I usually, well, everybody gets a list of archetypes that they pick from, but it fascinates me to see that I don't think you guys are picking the archetypes. I think the archetypes are actually picking you. And, wow. um, you know, I've seen people pick archetypes like the bully or the vampire and just admit to me and say, you know what, I just have to be honest. So it's so fascinating because archetypes are living patterns of energy. And uh, these living patterns of energy are influencing our life constantly. And uh, Chris, yes. you know that I that I work with archetypes a lot in my in my program, um, but this is one of the tools that 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 includes those archetypes. So let me, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share your so everyone can see it. And so this is Kristen's. This is Kristen's um, Wheel of Fortune. And like I said, it's got the 12, it starts here and the number one, and it goes around all the way. And so I'm gonna give you a, let's see how much time we have. I'll give you as much of a reading as I possibly can, then we'll move on to Stella. And you can ask me questions as I'm moving along, okay? Um, I recommend that you have a sheet of paper because that way you can write down. The idea here is that every single house you want to make sure you befriend that energy in that particular part of your life right and the first step to doing that is uh creating new affirmations to use that energy with okay so for example i have here like in in your first house you have the child and the child is one of the archetypes of survival and that first house is the house of ego and the house of identity the house of the mask we wear to the to in front of everyone else and the energy here what this tells me is that people see you as a very pure soul they see you as a pure energy they perceive you as someone who is very innocent not innocent in a bad way but has that pure innocence and um and also very creative because children are very creative. So, and I, I mean, I honestly couldn't think of a better archetype to have in that house for you because that's how I see you. I've always seen you as this very pure essence, pure energy that's very creative and that's the child, okay? Um, the second house. So what you wanna do is what every archetype uh, is, is, uh, neutral, you know, but what I'm saying is that archetypes aren't good or bad. They all have light and shadow. Can you, can you mute yourself for a second? <laughs> Oops. I'm trying. It's, it's okay. Mute. Yeah, it's, it's fine. I, I couldn't see you on here. I, I think I don't think your um, your video is on. But in any case, I was just saying that um, that every archetype is has light and darkness, even the child. So if you want to think of uh, the dark side of the child, the dark side of the child, a ch being childish, being um, also be having tantrums the child that has the tantrums, the spoiled child, those are the dark aspects of the child, right? So mm -hmm. always ask yourself, like, where in my identity do I become too spoiled? Or where do I just like to play and I, I have, and I just lose myself, you know, carelessly to just playing around. So those are the things that we need to tap into and, and find out. 
Um, the second house is the house of, I call it the money mindset house. It's really the house of what you value, what your values are in terms of uh, keeping a roof over your head, meeting your needs financially, all of that. So here it says that you really value, um, you have the lover there. So you have that innocence and that purity, and you also really uh, value connection and love and um, being in Zen, which is obviously, it's actually very accurate because your business is, is called Zen, right? What is yeah. your business is exactly called? Uh, my Zen space is my Zen studio. Room. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So, so you really value being in Zen in order to make financial decisions. So for you, it has to feel really good. Otherwise things either feel good or they don't. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's really awesome that you have that archetype there. Um, the next house is the house of communication. And that's how you used to communicate. That's the house of how you communicated with your, with your siblings growing up and um, how you communicate, the pattern that you create of communication with siblings usually transmits into your adult life with your colleagues. And the prostitute is all about, um, <laughs> the prostitute is also known as, as as the sellout that's how I like to know this the prostitute so <laughs> it's like where do you sell out on not speaking your truth that's amazing <laughs> spot on <laughs> yeah. so so you see how that works there mm -hmm. yeah so you need to ask yourself when where can I communicate more clearly and and more in more alignment with my integrity. So do you remember, like, were you an only child or do you have siblings? I, I'm, I was an only child. Did I know that? I don't know why I kind of thought that. I don't know that we've talked about that actually. Yeah, I don't think so. But for some reason, I always assumed that you were an only child. <laughs> You're very intuitive, yes. So um, anyway, so let me ask you this. When you were growing up, with your family, do you feel like it was sometimes hard for you to speak your, your mind? Absolutely. Yeah. I just now at this point in my adult life, I'm like doing a lot of reclaiming work about that because I, that was definitely a parent, a pattern with my parents because my parents have very, both of them, very strong personalities. So it was like, I was always deferring and I've noticed that that's been like the predominant pattern in most of my relationships. I'm always the listener and yeah. it like, it takes a lot for me to like become really fully self-expressed or did I'm, that's something I've really shifted just recently, but it's been like a lifelong thing for sure. Okay. So it's also going to be really good for you to, uh, it's great that you're doing the work right now because learning how to communicate with integrity and an alignment is actually going to help you uh, build some awesome relationships when it comes to like joint ventures and working with other people and partnering up. Um, you know what I mean? So yes. wherever, whatever house you have the uh, four archetypes of survival, you have a ton of potential. So mm -hmm. the most potential, the most power. Okay. So, so what that tells me is that there's, that you have a lot of communication power, mm -hmm. which means that your message, your marketing message, you know, you need to make sure you own that, own the results. You know, you are someone who helps people transform mm -hmm. their business through, mm -hmm. um, through dancing, right? Yes, so, exactly. So you need to own the transformation and say it and don't ever feel like, oh, am I saying that they are, but they're really not, not. you know what I mean? I do. Just no, completely. Voice and on the transformation. Um, and it's going to be much easier for you to be visible and do your, your 30 day challenge and you, your video challenge and do all of that. Cause I'm, I'm sure that doesn't, that's, that that's out of your comfort zone, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. It's, um, 
like when I'm in it, it becomes easier because that performance element of me that I love comes out, but I'm not, I, you notice like I haven't jumped into it. Like I sort of like been just planning like the last two days and haven't started it yet. So yeah, it definitely takes right. something for me to step into. Yeah. Yeah. So today, today when we, when she first joined, she's like, oh, I'm writing out all my topics that I'm going to talk about. Good. And that's good. You know, sitting sitting down and owning what you're going to say and then step into the energy and say, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be mm. honest with my communication. You got right. this, babe. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. um, okay. The fourth house is the house is your home. That's the mm. house that you grew. That's the house that represents the home that you grew up in when you were a child. And it also represents the home that you replicate as an adult. We usually tend to uh, do what we did in those first six, seven years, repeat it somehow at, in our adult life. And you mm. have the seeker here. And the mm. seeker is an explorer. The seeker is someone who doesn't like to, um, you don't necessarily, how do I say this? You're always looking for adventure. Mm. You're always looking to do, so you probably love doing, um, going and trying out new kinds of foods and trying out all kinds of ways. Someone like you with the seeker in the fourth house can also be someone who, um, who is restless in, the, in, in, in a relationship, like in a home environment, and you just need constant move and to move around and travel. Yep. Definitely restless. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, so seekers that people that have the seeker in that fourth house love to travel. They, they, because it's like, you know, they like to be in movement and they, mm -hmm. they feel comfortable being in there, waking up in Timbuktu. Mm. So seekers always look for alternative ways of being in the home, in a home environment. Mm. Yeah. So as we, as I go through these with you, um, mm -hmm. what I would normally do if we were having a one-on-one -on -one is we would be, we would be creating new affirmations for every single one. So for example, you know, the child and the lover and the seeker, those are great, but the prostitute that you had, ask yourself, how do you want to feel communicating? Mm. That's a question. Wow. How do you want uh, to feel as a communicator? I feel authentic and powerful communicating. Okay, good. So you want to feel authentic and powerful. You want to be an authentic and powerful communicator. So mm -hmm. you would write your affirmation and say, I am mm -hmm. an authentic, I am authentic, powerful communicator. And then in front of the I am, you're going to write, isn't it wonderful? that I am an authentic and powerful communicator. That's great. So that's your affirmation. Isn't it, it. wonderful? As if it already mm. was in the past, true in the past tense. Got it. That's nebulizing it. Mm. So, um, okay, so that's what you, you ultimately want to come up, you ultimately want to ha have 12, um, 12 new affirmations, right? Mm, cool. Um, okay, so the fifth house is, the fifth house is how you channel your energy, your creativity, okay? And you channel your creativity, you have the servant there. You channel your creativity in, in giving and in, in, like even when you dance, it's in service of others. So yep. that's, that's why I feel like you really lose yourself in your dancing because you're doing it in service of something else, but that's bigger than you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Completely. Yeah, so for sure. Just, just make sure, like I said, so these archetypes, they're not positive or negative. They're neutral, right? Mm -hmm. So think of the servant. The servant is a servant. It's not a slave. So make sure that as somebody who serves, you are also serving yourself mm -hmm. and you are putting, um, and you are charging what you're worth and you are being compensated accordingly. Yeah. 
because you're someone that can just give away your gift for free and that's not that's not serving you absolutely so the more you <laughs> become the servant to yourself and serve yourself the more energy and flow you're going to get oh that's beautiful wow so so write your affirmation isn't it wonderful how well i serve my inner being how much I, I'm in service to myself as I am to others. Mm. Wow. Cool. Yeah, that's amazing because that's like, that's a pivotal, what you just said encapsulates like the struggle I've, I've felt like I've been in for like the last like 20 years, like all of my adult life like how to, how to shift it from that. It wasn't about self-sacrifice, but it was about serving and honoring myself and my gifts and my creativity. And at the same time being of service to others, it's, it's, that's really profound. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. And, you know, I'll tell you that, um, the addict is opposite from number the fifth, the fifth house. Mm. So, you can mm. it can become addictive for you to uh to be in service of others and you just become addicted to that so you've yeah. got to find the balance in in being half you know you have to be as heavily in service to yourself and equally in service to others so don't let that don't let the balance off yep don't get off balance the sixth house is the house which goes along with what you just said the sixth house is the house of occupation. It's, mm -hmm. it's the energy that is running the your occupations, right? So it could be the occupation of running your studio or or of being a professional dancer, you know, and you have the victim there. And so you probably worked really, really hard to become a professional dancer because you were, you always thought, oh, it, this is too hard. Like they had that, you know, the victim mentality as, this is hard, so I'm gonna work even harder and I'm gonna serve even more. Yep, that's exactly it. <laughs> See, because all the, the, these all work together, okay? So mm -hmm. the cool thing about the victim is that the victim, when you befriend it, it becomes the victor. And that mm. energy, when it becomes the victor instead of the victim energy, it will propel you forward in your career like no one's business. Mm. So, so the victim, because it's one of the four archetypes of survival, once it becomes the victor is a very powerful energy to have in your occupation, which is the sixth house. Wow. What you said about that, that's where the most potential is because it's one of the four survivals. Yep. So how then with the flipping from victim to victor, is it? that affirmation piece that you talked about is that is that the key to befriending so it, the, the, key, it the key to befriending the victim is is owning everything that happens mm. in your business not from a place of control but from a place of power meaning mm. um knowing that anything that happens no matter what um, starts first inside yourself, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so, so that's really cool for you actually, because you're so amazing already that you should, you can easily stand on the pill on the fact that, wait a minute, I'm so fucking amazing. Why is this not happening? Yeah. And, and the universe will be like, Oh, wait a minute. She already, she knows she's amazing. We got to give it to her. <laughs> so yeah, so the victim energy is more about, um, understanding that you are responsible for everything. It's a responsibility. Got it. Yeah. So we take, I always say, you know, take, we take accountability for the good and the bad. And yep. obviously, you know, the bad stuff, it's like, oh, well, why did I not get that? Why did this not, why did my program not fill up? There's some, what inside of me created me, my launch to flop? for example, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really different than saying, this doesn't work. Nothing works. Marielle didn't teach me anything. 
just kidding no totally <laughs> fun, right um, no. no but instead just saying what inside of me created this situation or what inside of me needs expression for this to work yes. and we, and and that's when that you turn into the victor because then you have total control <laughs> make sense absolutely Com uh, completely completely awesome. completely completely and and again this is this is exactly just like the 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 servant one, this is something that I've been like really actively as practice at work on, like for especially now the last like three years, I would say that compared to where I was three years ago, it's yeah. And yeah. it's because of all this. Yeah. Yeah. Someone with your, with your archetypes and the place they are really, you struggled a lot to where, to get to where you are. Like, yeah. <laughs> audition after audition, after audition. And yeah you know, extra doing your routines every single day. I mean, yeah, I could see that. But now yeah. it's just asking you to look within, look within, own what you own, your results in the outer, own them inside. All right, so the seventh house is the house of marriage and relationships. And mm -hmm. you have the healer in this house. And this really means that you come together uh, in your relationship to heal each other but you tend to be the one who's always trying to heal 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 you always have to and and that's the number one um the the the, the one thing that the healer I, I have the healer too the the healer always wants to heal we're always arrows out trying to help people but we got to help ourselves first the healer becomes more powerful when the healer heals herself first mm. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and, and ironically, when you heal yourself first, you give more, you can give more, which is so cool because in this house, in the house of relationships, that just means you're going to be able to give even more love. Mm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So create your little affirmation for that as well. And think about what kind of relationship you want to be in with your husband and, uh, and say, and then create say, um, isn't it wonderful that I am in the past tense? All right. So the eighth house is the house is the house of everything that's secret, everything mm -hmm. that is behind the scenes, everything. Um, <laughs> this, is what I, this is what I call the house of the shadow. Okay? Mm -hmm. So everything that we say, oh, I would never do that. Or I am not like that is 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 the energy that we repress and it goes into our shadow our alter ego so you're the damsel <laughs> <laughs> i always knew you had a little damsel in you <laughs> so my only advice to you in here is i love the damsel actually most of my friends are damsels um, <laughs> i'm not a damsel but i do love my damsels um you want to make sure that because this is the, the house of what I see as a shadow, you need to do something for her every single week. Okay. Mm. So ask yourself, what about what made you pick the damsel as your archetype? Okay. Mm -hmm. And think about journaling to her and, mm. uh, and paying attention to her. I just, I had a client right now that I did a reading for and she, had the hedonist in this house right and the hedonist loves attention and luxury and being in uh you know the the fabulous everything that's the hedonist so i said even if it's if, even if it's you wearing the most fabulous red lipstick to appease your hedonist even if it's ha enjoying a glass of wine you know mm. once a week that's that's expensive and beautiful you have to give voice to that shadow or it's going to screw you over. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. The alchemist, the alchemist is, um, the, the ninth house is the house of divine union with God and communion mm -hmm. and, uh, mystic mystical, um, it's the door to your communication with God, really. Mm. 
Mm. You have the alchemist there, of course. You know, the alchemist, that means that you really understand the universe as being this massive ball of magic. And that's how you see it as, as energy and alchemy and, and hold on, honey, I'm on, I, I'm on a call. What's up? Are, can I have the tripod? Yes, you may. Can, can you hold on. I have to give this to my little YouTuber. <laughs> my son has his own YouTube channel. <laughs> Here you go. You're welcome. Um, okay, so where was I? So yes, yeah, so you see this, this, the universe and God as this magical ball of energy. And by leaning into that, your, your relationship is going to grow more and more and more. Mm. Okay. Yep. It's the door. It's the doorway to more connection. Um, okay. So, and we're almost done here. Almost done, Stella. <laughs> I usually only do, um, mini sessions like a mini session but we uh Ashley did couldn't make it tonight so I had you guys get more <laughs> thank you um yeah you're welcome so the 10th the 11th house is the addict and the uh, 11th house is, is your perception of the world it's kind of like how you see um it's kind of like a like a filter okay how you see the world and you have the addict there so what that tells me is that you go all in <laughs> and you become an addict in whatever you're doing wherever your attention is you're laser focused is that right yep, yep absolutely that about you when you and i started working together you you did every you went all in you did it you got everything done i was like Damn, I like this girl. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved you. Um, you. But but that's that's what that is. So again, you go all in. Your perception is that of get it done. Um, this house is also the house of social. I, I call it the house of social media. So <laughs> <laughs> because it's kind of like how you see visibility, right? Mm -hmm. How you see. Um, the different platforms and um, how also other people perceive your communication. Mm -hmm. So, so what I would do here is I, I would ask, well, let me ask you this. Why did you pick the addict? Um, the part of that description, it was about the overworking, like the, um, the workaholic and especially um, addiction um to anything and when I think about dance and I think there was something about like like being so focally fo so singly focused it can become an obsession that like you get your identity from and when I saw that I was like okay no, that's me because <laughs> it's not always a positive thing for sure like a lot of my struggles as we talked about before from that other house are tied into that okay so so maybe try to relax in the way you see things like like try mm -hmm. to try to always perceive uh the flexibility in life and energy right mm -hmm. yeah um i think that that house is really well very connected to that fifth house serve yourself first relax mm -hmm. take a breather um you know the opposite of the addict would be yeah i guess relaxing and and giving yourself the space to yeah. to know and to trust that everything is falling into place as it should. Mm. Okay, mm, makes and, complete sense. And the twelfth house, the twelfth house is your house of the unconscious. It's the it's the subconscious part of our being. So this is great. Um, the subconscious part of our being is like you know it's the recorder that's back there you don't you live in the conscious part of your of your being and everything that happens in your life gets recorded whether it's true or not in the subconscious right so the energy that you have there is the saboteur and the saboteur is the tester of intuition so what this tells me is that you are highly 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 intuitive okay yep. Yep. And because of that, maybe when you were younger or growing up or you weren't so in tuned with your intuition, um, you would hear things and you wouldn't follow that. You would think, oh, I'm crazy or, oh, that was dumb. And as you ask somebody with a saboteur in that 12th house, 
uh, matures, they start befriending the saboteur and actually saying, okay, like you get a download and you say, okay, that I'm not crazy. I'm going to go with that gut feeling. The more you do that, or the more you did that, the more your intuition grows. So you're the saboteur turn, turns into the guardian of intuition. Mm. So somebody that has the saboteur in that particular house just is somebody that has a shitload of intuitive information. Yeah. Again, makes complete sense. The last, I would say like four years, I've been like building that muscle like daily almost with a lot of the practices that I do. And it's to the point now where it's like, it's just, it's almost automatic. Like Here just and come. you go with it. Yeah. Absolutely. The more you befriend your intuition, the more information you get from heaven. That's beautiful. Yeah. They can't trust you with more information unless you follow through. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any questions? That's amazing. Um, oh, just one question. We um, just. I know we're really short on time. Just quick, the artist, is there anything I should know about that? The, oh, I did, the did I get the artist? Oh, I, yeah, I don't think we talked about that one. But. The, the artist, sorry, I didn't even realize I skipped that. The artist okay. of your highest potential. <laughs> <laughs> so funny because the, the reading I did earlier was the same thing. She has the artist in the 10th and the saboteur in the 12th. I thought wow. I that. Interesting. So Interesting. what this says is that your highest potential in anything in life is always be tapping into your artistic side. So if you are getting on a sales call, how can you tap into that energy? If you tap into that artistic energy, your sales call will be successful. If exactly. you are going to create a new program, tap into the artistic energy to create that program and it's going to be successful. So everything that you do in life, if you tap into the energy that's in there, that is your highest potential for that. Mm, got it. Thank you. Sense? Completely. Okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank awesome. you. All right, Stella, are you ready? Yes, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Awesome. So Stella, um, tell us, what do you do? Is there a question you have in particular? You wanna introduce yourself? Cause I know you had to leave for a little bit. I know, I know, and I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, wasn't the first uh, part of the conversation. Uh, I used my old computer and then that was, uh, <laughs> that was the worst thing I did. Uh, <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, again, my uh, my name is Estella. And first thing, uh, I want to thank you for having me and uh, thank you for your time first. Um, I'm a single mom. I have two wonderful kids and two beautiful um, uh, grandsons. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Yeah. So do you want, okay, so I'll, you want me to, do you, do you work or no? I used to work for a company for uh, 15 years and uh, almost six years. Yeah, I started running my um, daycare, uh, my, my, my home, my house. Oh, okay. Yeah. And right now, yeah, due to the crisis, yeah, I'm home just doing all the chores and, you know, do as much as I can. Yeah. Well. <laughs> until I, you know, I know until I can, you know, reopen it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. So a bakery, you said, right? Uh, daycare. Oh, daycare. Okay. Got it. Got it. Wow. Daycare. That's a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, I enjoy every day. Okay. I really, yeah. Uh, the kids uh, make every single day and, you know, I, I'm happy, you know, what I, uh, whatever I can do for them. Awesome. All right. Well, let's start with, uh, I'm excited to do this for you. Thank you for being here. And we're going to start with the very first house where you have the victim. I have the victim in my first house too. So don't feel bad. <laughs> um, the victim is the, the first house is your identity, your ego, how you see yourself, how you see how the world, no, it's, it's not how the world sees you. It's the mask you wear to the world. Okay. So this tells me that sometimes, and this, like I said, this was true for me as well. It's like, 
oh, you know, I'm always, life kind of sucks. Things are always happening to me. Or, you know, it's kind of like that victim mentality that we show up in life with like that. And it can happen to you at any time. For me, it happened, for example, when I was a, when I was a teenager, all of a sudden, you know, I see things going on in my house. And I remember the day that I said, oh, I will never do that. And that's the first time that I owned the victim in my okay. life. I said, I will never do that. And that, and I became a victim and I pursued the rest of my life to not be that. But do you see where the energy of the victim created an identity. identity? And that's yeah. true, yeah. that's true, definitely. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So yeah. you wanna create some affirmations to help you not, to help you not, not to not be the victim, but to become the victor instead of the victim. I see. Okay. Um, the second house is, a, I don't know what, it, what that says. Mm -hmm. Is the care uh, caregiver? Oh, caregiver, caregiver. Okay. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, how amazing is that? You can't make this shit up, seriously. So the second house is the house of what you value in order to make money in the world, right? I call it the house of money mindset. And you got the caregiver there. Like you know, in, in your life, you value giving care to others and getting paid for that mm -hmm. isn't that amazing it is it is, yes, it is. that's what you do in a daycare you care for other people and that's how you make your money in the world right so anything that you do so as long as you stay with that energy of always using your energy to care and care you know give care to others you're going to make money and you will you just have to probably work a little bit on that first house on turning that victim into victor yep i'm okay. pretty sure yes so the third house is how you communicate how you communicate with your peers and with your siblings and you have the companion there so that me that just tells me that you have a lot of friends people like you you're friendly you're not someone that communicates abrasively um, you're somebody who listens to others, somebody who is very communicative and in a very kind way. Does that make sense? Definitely. Yes. <laughs> I'm impressed. You're telling me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm just reading this. <laughs> I know, um, I know. <laughs> so, so that's really good. Just make sure that you own your opinions. Okay. When you feel something and when you are, when you feel strongly about something, make it's okay for you to be, uh, for you to voice your opinions. It's important. Okay. Because people love you anyway. Um, <laughs> the fourth house is the house of, is your home. So home that you were when you were a child and the home that you are in now, and you have the child there. So that tells me that you feel really safe in your house. Your home mm -hmm. is, um, is a playful place. It's, uh, it's where you can feel creative, where you feel like you can um, express yourself well. Mm -hmm. Is that yep. how you feel? It makes, it makes sense, yes. Yes, okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, the fifth house, okay, so the fifth house is, this is amazing. It, this is how you flow your creativity and your energy, okay? This is, they call the, the fifth house, the, the, the house of uh, creativity and good fortune, but it's basically how the energy of God flows through you and creatively, and you have the rescuer here. <laughs> so, of course, you always want to rescue everyone. You want to help everyone. You want to, that's why you run a daycare, because, and again, the rescuer and the caregiver, those two, I mean, I, I don't know how you can make this up because the rescuer is, is that you have that sense of not only just caregiving others, but rescuing them from where they're at and, and taking care of them. Yep. Yes. That's how you flow your energy. That's how you're meant to flow your energy. So you just have to be careful that you, again, you rescue yourself first because first. a rescuer can go out and help everyone else except themselves. I see. Okay. Right, right, you can't right. give what you don't have. 
Mm -hmm. You cannot give what you don't have. Okay, the sixth house is, uh, is the house of occupation. And this is like your career. And this is the energy that, that you have to run your career or occupation successfully. And you have the lover in there. And the lover is just someone who gives a lot of love and compassion. And the more you continue using that love and compassion in your career, the more in alignment you are. So, so for you, it's important that you open up your daycare again. Because I don't know. Yes. It, it, it is because it's more, it's, it's very much a passion for you. It's a vocation, not a passion, a vocation. A vocation. Because your, your creativity needs to be in that positive, loving uh, flow in order for you to feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The seventh house is the house of relationships and, uh, and marriage. And you have the warrior here. And the warrior, you have to be careful and that you're not always fighting with your husband. <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it's, I'm not saying it, they are. <laughs> so, so, you know, you can, you can be testy and, and like have that Latina fire in you and, and put, put him in his place. And uh, it's kind of like that fiery passion, right? So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so, you know, ask yourself if you are in the relationship that you want to be, if you are, what do you want from that relationship? Because warriors always feel like they have to be battling and you don't necessarily have to be battling as a warrior. You can be, a warrior can also lead people. It can also uh, guide people, you know, it, it doesn't have to be in battle all the time. Um, gosh, I had an, an awesome affirmation yesterday. I forgot it, but it was about the warrior. You can become that triumphant warrior that leads people and that, that guides people. And it doesn't always have to fight your own battles. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. You can mm -hmm. have other people fight your battles as well. So you know, we can explore that further if you want outside of here. I see. Right. <laughs> um, okay. The eighth house is the house of um, the shadow. Like I was talking about the shadow, everything that's in secret behind the scenes. And you have the, the prostitute there. And what that, the prostitute is the sellout. Where do you sell out on the things that you believe in? Okay. So you need to make sure you ask yourself what you're selling out on. What, where are you not speaking your truth? Where are you not standing strong enough on something? Do you give up too easily on things? Um, do you feel like, see, the prostitute is not, it's not a literal prostitute. It's more about somebody who doesn't, who, who sells out on things that are important or that are really important to them. Okay. Yeah. So ask yourself, where are you uh, not getting into action enough in things that are really important to you? I see. Make mm -hmm. sense? Yep. It the is. prostitute is, is like I said to Kristen, um, it's the shadow. So, so you really probably want to do a lot of shadow work. Funny enough, I, this is an amazing book. You should check it out. It's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers by Debbie Ford. Um, it's all about, it's, just, it's so funny that that was on my desk today, reclaiming your power, creativity, brilliance, and dreams all by doing shadow work. You should do a lot of shadow work. Shadow work is good for you. When you reclaim your shadow, you are going to have so much energy so much abundance is going to come to you, especially because notice how that eight is uh, opposite of that two, the money, to, the money mindset department. Mm -hmm. So when that shadow uh, opens up, it's going to give you energy into that, that area as well. All right. Um, the ninth is the, is, is the house of divinity and God. And this is, you have the dreamer there and um, 
this just means that you should analyze your dreams and, and what you dream a lot at night, um, as well as like having visions and doing visualizations because you have, uh, you have a gift and you can easily tap into your relationship with God in your dreams and through mm -hmm. active imagination and, and, uh, and the right type of meditations. Okay. Okay. The 10th house, funny. Okay. So your highest potential is to be a teacher. <laughs> How funny is that? I'm telling you, you're going to make this shit up. So, so your highest potential is to always be teaching. Yeah. And everything. Wow. That's pretty amazing. The 11th house is uh, how you see the world and um, your perception of the world. And you have the saboteur there. And the saboteur, you're basically, sometimes you get a little pessimistic. And you're like, oh, it's never going to work out for me. Um, very careful. Um, so you need to... Uh, yeah, you just need to say, mm, I wonder how it can work out for me instead of it's never going to work out for me. Hmm, I wonder how mm -hmm. I start getting curious start so that you can start changing that. Okay. Right, right, right. right. And last but not least, uh, so the 12th house is the, the house of your unconscious. And uh, that house, you got the, the diplomat diplomatic the diplomat and that just means that you really you are here always you're kind of very politically correct right like you like to to you don't like to hurt people's feelings you like things to be in in order um yeah you're here to establish diplomacy and here per uh, in this, it's like you're here to kind of establish diplomacy because in diplomacy, think about it. Diplomacy is order, right? It's establishing mm -hmm. order. It's saying things correctly. It's saying things, uh, it's creating structures, right? And you do that in, in, in your profession, in daycare, in, in, through your daycare. You help family, you help kids. Uh, the, what, what's coming to my mind is, you know, when, when you have like the five-year-olds, like my five-year-old and I teach him how to say things correctly, instead of just saying it at however they want. So right. You are here always subconsciously establishing formats, formats, formats. So what your, the over, my overall impression of your um, wheel is that, uh, especially for your business, is that you are here to serve and to be this amazing teacher and caregiver uh, to, to children and whoever you want to and feel love towards. And you really should try to change your perception of, of, things and and just be a little more optimistic as as much as you possibly can and um instead of saying oh man it's never gonna work for me or i'm scared you should say oh i wonder how it can work for me see when we just say i wonder how it can happen you start getting energy into motion right then and there right, right, it's, right. Like, it's like adding um adding that phrase Positive. Yeah, exactly. So it's like when Plus you create, it's mine. exactly, but when you create yeah. your affirmations and then in front of the affirmation, you say, um, isn't it wonderful? It's like, it tricks your brain into thinking, oh, it already happened. Hmm, I wonder how it can happen. So that, that's how you get, we get energy in motion. So yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> it's sense. Do you have any, any last questions? Uh, yes. Um, okay. One of my fears is um, I really want to do things right. And I'm scared to make mistakes. That's one of my, that's one of my, my problems. So I, I know I have the energy to do it. And, and I know I always tell myself, I know I can do it and I'm going to do it. 
after that, it's, mm, I don't know if that will work. <laughs> so that's the way that I, that's the way that's that, the that I feel. Right, right. So it just gave me back to the beginning. <laughs> so that's one of my, my, my fears. That's Absolutely. one that I, uh, so that's, that's, that has everything to do with that 11th house with the saboteur and the victim and that in one, the victim and the saboteur are what, if you, if you tap into those two uh, archetypes to start out with, and you start befriending those, it's like almost like a domino effect. It's like hitting the dominoes and getting everything else to start working for you. So you mm -hmm. need to do a lot of mindset work, mindset work, reprogramming your mind. And you have to do it in terms of um, consciously, you know, you, you, you would, you would really benefit from saying one day, you know what, I need to invest in myself and do the mindset work, whether it's watching videos, um, you know, doing programs, there's reading books, however it is, but actively investing your time into consciously changing those mindsets so that you, that's how you're going to befriend your saboteur. All right. Okay. So that's it guys that's all i have for for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this i love doing i did it and i every, love it i i do these free readings once a month on wisdom wednesdays so um once a month every four weeks i do these if you want a mini reading uh feel free to go and create your wheel of fortune you can uh, learn how to create it at mariellealvarado.com forward slash alchemy library. And that's where you can learn the process of creating this. And then just come back here into the Selfish Society. Whenever I have a, um, a Wisdom Wednesday where I do a live reading, bring your, your wheel and I am happy to give you some insight. I usually only do this behind the scenes in my programs. Um, <laughs> and if you're looking to establish business systems so that you can start getting clients and, um, and using your wisdom out in the world to serve others and, and yourself and your bank account, then feel free to get on a, um, to book a call with me, a breakthrough call. If you can find a spot there, I'd be happy to give you some insight there. All right, guys. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Maria. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank fun. you. Thanks for amazing. watching, guys. Love you guys. It was amazing. Amazing. Thank you. Oh, thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'm too exit. I know I'm trying to exit too. <laughs>